Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are here with Waste Management, yes, WM, and we are touring the El Sobrante landfill. So in this video, yes, you get to see what happens to your trash once you throw your trash in the recycling bin. So anyways, um, today we're going up the hill, as you guys can see right now, at the El Sobrante landfill, and we're going to be checking out what happens to all your trash, maybe see all the garbage trucks dump out their loads, and... Um, Another interesting thing about the El Sobrante landfill is that it's actually more than just a landfill. So the El Sobrante landfill was uh, built in, I believe, 1986. Um, and um, it accepts 70,000, about 70,000 tons of trash each day. And this landfill covers up to 1,322 acres, which is a lot. And it's actually, when I said it's more than just a landfill, yes, it really is because not only um is this a landfill where um all your trash goes but it's also get this it's also home to a lot of wildlife which a lot of you guys may not expect because you're you guys are probably wondering why are so much wildlife living around trash well i'm going to answer the question right now all right guys so to answer that question richard is currently taking me off road right now to show me all the wildlife stuff and as you guys can see there are a lot of trees and plants in this area so this should explain why the el sobrante landfill has a diverse range of animal species well it's because of all of this so um the the um the wildlife preserve is about 688 acres of the landfill and it includes habitats like sage scrub, riparian areas, and grasslands. And the landfill's HCP, or Habitat Conservation Plan, is currently aiming to protect 31 sensitive species, including federally listed ones, through habitat preservation and restoration efforts. Right. So how long have you been working at Waste Management for? Uh, I've only been here for uh, roughly a year and a half. I started uh, last, uh, last July. Oh, wow. And uh, honestly, it's the best job I've ever had. And uh, I'm not saying that just because. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that just because uh, they. they um, since, since the first day that I started till now, um, there's never been anybody. Uh, I've never been absent of anybody that I could ask for advice. Everybody's very helpful. Everybody understands that. You know, we're all very much human, and sometimes you need some help. Sometimes you need backup. And. Um, I've had help from you know people who are in the same kind of year group as I am, as well as people who have been working here for 20 plus years. So coming up here on our left, this is what Richard calls WM's new shop. And no, it is not like a repair shop for like garbage trucks, but it's more of like a repair shop and car wash bay for like the landfill vehicles. So like, you know, those vehicles, like all the 
you know, the bulldozers, the diggers, those kind of vehicles. Like, this is where the they all get repaired and get washed. And yeah, this is where the technicians work to um, get the vehicles uh, ready every time to clear out the landfill, dig dirt, do whatever they need to do. And yeah, so he's going to be giving us a drive around the shop. So this is our new shop. We have eight total uh, vehicle bays here in the shop. One of them is complete. Uh, two of them are completely drive throughable, so you can drive all the way through the building. Uh, one of them is a wash bay. The other one is uh, a uh, um, a maintenance bay, and also our welding bay. Uh, within this building, we also have a oil room, a clean room for our transmissions and engines to be worked on, as well as a parts room for our usual parts, just in case something um, uh, that that usually goes down, goes down. And we're able to access it very quickly and put it back out there. Uh, we weld everything from steps to machines to everything, really. Uh, so a lot of our machines, as you can see, you can see one right here inside the bay. You can see a couple outside here in the uh, uh, yard. Um, they're they're made of you know steel and metal. And on the occasion if something does snap or break, uh, our uh, resident rel welder is able to make sure to get that done for us in an efficient manner, so we can put these machines back out there. If if you guys see that thing sticking out on the right, that is actually the landfills, one of the landfills 17 uh, groundwater monitoring wells. So what that is, is that like it's basically to ensure environmental safety and those wells go uh, one to 200 feet uh, deep underground. So if you guys see that little uh, vehicle up there that's standing up really tall, um, that truck is actually uh, drilling into the ground so that way they can uh put in a new well into the landfill which is pretty cool which i did not even know because to me um at first glance it looked like a some sort of like crane or something but then when i asked richard he told me um that it was a type of vehicle um that uses like a really big drill to drill in a really big hole into the ground so that way they can put in uh the new wells for the landfill which is pretty cool which i didn't know thanks for sharing richard all right guys, so now we are going up to the top of the landfill. We are actually almost close to being to the top. And Richard uh, just told me right now that um, we actually added uh, one to 200 uh, feet of elevation uh, as we uh, left our starting point. So that's actually pretty cool. So apparently we're, um, we're uh, above 100, uh, 200 feet right now. So, um, and if you look off uh, to the right in the distance, that's actually Lake Matthews over there, which is pretty cool, which I did not even know. All right, guys, as you guys can see, we made it to the top and look at all of these uh, vehicles here, not just garbage trucks, but also people with trailers. They also have stuff to drop off here at the landfill. And as you guys can see to the right, there's a waste management uh, front loader pulling out right now. Looks like also there's a waste management truck unloading, which is also pretty cool. Um, oh my goodness, there is there is so much trash up here. I think all these people are getting rid of uh, junk. Wow, look at this.
So as you guys can see to the right over here, this little wall of like tilted nets. So these are uh, called wind catchers. So basically what they do is that like, say it's like super windy here at the landfill and there's a lot of trash flying around. Um, these wind catchers are basically like a wall to help catch the trash so that way it doesn't fly out of the landfill, which is actually um, really cool. Um, I expected the landfill to have something like this and they do. So yeah, it's pretty cool to see that um, that like um, they have it in person. Oh, by the way, that there's a neighborhood down there. And if you guys are watching this video and you live in Corona right now, that might be your neighborhood. So um, yeah. All right. So as you guys can see over here, this is where you guys um, drop off your uh, electronic waste, stuff that cannot go into your uh, garbage can, like uh, anything like electronic waste, hazardous items, paint cans, like all that stuff. So anyways, um, now we're going to head back down and uh, maybe uh, watch some of the trucks unload. And yeah, let's go ahead and see.